Hi, I'm Alex Russell Stoneham. I am a holistic coach and an artist as well. I love creativity. I'm really passionate about earth energy and working with energy lines. Um, I love integrating my dowsing practice into healing and I love, love, love labyrinths. So something about labyrinths really calls to me. I love the journey to the inner self. I love the introspection, how you walk in a very gentle pace, kind of processional pace in a labyrinth. And I love the designs, I love the history, I love archaeology. So I'm, I'm very passionate about labyrinths and enjoy teaching them. I've built and designed a labyrinth um, myself. And so this is a short video to show you how to create your own labyrinth by design on paper. You can still apply these principles to on the land as well. I'd recommend you get in touch with your dowsing skills if you can, or just your intuitive skills of feeling where the center of the labyrinth needs to be, feeling where the entrance to the labyrinth needs to be, feeling whether it's a seven circuit labyrinth, which is the most common one we see, um, or maybe something smaller, something larger. Seven is a great number because you're working on a very special level, seven colors of the rainbow, seven chakras. There are lots of different levels with seven and imagine that your journey in a labyrinth could be associated with the chakras. You may at each turn call on your intention with your journey into the center of the labyrinth to let go of what's been held in the first chakra and enhance and replenish what needs to be in that first chakra on the first turn and then on the second turn in the next circuit you may work with your second chakra that's just an example of how you can connect with that and of course the chakras match with the colors of the rainbow as well so you might be thinking feeling red on the first circuit and then orange on the second etc so i'm going to show you today how to build this from scratch. It's a really lovely process. It's very relaxing. Um, I try and make it intentional. Um, my design ideas, you know, I'm going to share them with you and I hope you like them, but please make it your own too and let me know what you think. Okay, so I'm going to talk you through how to draw a labyrinth. And it's a really beautiful process based on starting with a circle and creating the seed of life, which is part of the flower of life, which is an important part of creation. And it's a, it's a meditative process building a labyrinth. It's a form of a journey internally. And consider that you are the labyrinth and this is your inner journey. And it feels really relaxing actually to build it. So what I've done is I've got a piece of watercolor or painting paper. So it's quite card-like. You can use textured paper if you want, whatever feels right to you. Um, I'm going to use some lovely watercolor pigments with um, metallic hints and it's by Vita, so Colours by Vita, based in Sweden. They're very pure pigments, lovely to work with. I've also got a pair of compasses, the Statler 552 model, and this is really nice to work with. It's a lovely, lovely way of working where you can just simply press in to widen and close up the compass and then use the little spin wheel at the top to make sure you refine everything and that kind of locks it securely in place so I recommend using both the widening making sure by refining you have finally locked in your circle and it's, it's pretty accurate. The process itself is something which takes iterations to get right and just remember with art with creativity with drawing if you're seeking perfection 
it might become a frustration to you and just to enjoy the process is more important and the way I, I work with filling out the lines with colour is by creating dots using uh, an object which is used for embossing. So I love using this to create little circles. So I've got a little lab pipette here and I'm going to later on drop a bit of water on here, mix it with my little dabber and that creates a really neat line. Um, I also use a Uniball gold ink pen, it's Signo, um, and it says broad on the, the lid, and it's just a beautiful gold ink, and it's really nice quality, so I enjoy working with that. And if you want to see one that has been created a bit earlier, here is one that I've done before. And you can see here I've drawn with the gold, the flower of life. And I've been using a single colour here for my dots. And it's, it's just really nice and relaxing to do. So I'm going to start now by giving you some key measurements. So I'm using an A3 um, piece of paper. And as I said, it's quite card-like. And what I've done is I've cut it to a certain size. I've cut it to be 29.75 centimetres wide by 30.5 centimetres high. Now I'm going to be working in centimetres throughout, so hopefully for anyone viewing from the US, that's an easy conversion to make online. Um, and I've marked a point here with my compass. Um, you can see where I'm pointing with my, my set square and I love using this set square um, because it helps me with right angles, it helps me with measuring and it's got a nice beveled edge as well. Um, I got this from Moreplan, um, which are for fashion and pattern cutting tools, um, but I'm, I'm sure they're available, you know, this kind of thing can be available anywhere. Um, so what I've done is I've measured something which is a dot which is 11.4 centimeters high and from the left side it's 14.3 centimeters in. So what I'm going to do next is using my set square I'm going to just draw across. So it's going to be using a pencil, I'm, I'm using just a plain HB stapler pencil right now. I'm going to rest the pencil in the, the compass hole I've made and just go about four or five centimeters either side. There you go. And then I'm going to also create a vertical and I'm gonna do my best here. You can just take it to the edge of the paper to, to be as true as you can to the right angles of the paper. And again, four or five centimeters there. And then I'm going to do a circle, which is, um, I'm gonna show you on here, the diameter is gonna be, if I plonk it on here, 3.1 or 3.2. Um, that's just the, the rough measurement, it's, it's um, Choose 3.1 or 3.2, whatever feels right to you. And I'm going to draw my circle from this center hole that I pushed in with my um, compass. And then I'm going to go to the top of where it crosses with the circle circumference. And then I'm going to draw a half circle here at the top. I'm going to mirror that at the bottom and do another half circle here. Don't worry about it being exactly precise. It's, it's more the, um, the arcs that we're going to create and the little fish shapes that we're going to create here that are the important shapes for the seed of life. I don't know about you, but I just, I'm just fascinated by sacred geometry. 
endlessly beautiful, really harmonious to the eye. I could look at it for hours and hours. So I've just created here four petals, if you like, for the seed of life. And what I'm going to do next is use my set square to do my best at finding where each point of the petals of the seed of life are, are there. So I can draw a square around my circle. And um, when we're doing squares and circles, we're working with the platonic solids, the building blocks of the universe. And it's very simple, but it's amazing what you can, <clears throat> excuse me, it's amazing what you can develop from a simple circle and a square. And as you've seen, you can create a square from a circle. And what I'm next going to do is you can see where it crosses over with the original central circle. You can see these lines and just imagine drawing a sort of rough dotted line. You don't have to draw this in. You can do it by eye. Um, this is basically helping with the circuits of the labyrinth. Um, if you haven't walked a labyrinth in real life before, this finger labyrinth that we're drawing, you can do the journey with your finger. So you don't have to have been in a physical labyrinth. The experience can be very much the same thing. Um, it is lovely, of course, to walk a labyrinth. And if you're interested, there's the Labyrinth Society, which is an international organization, which is for people who love and um, like sharing the beauty of walking a labyrinth and going into your in a world. So what I'm going to do next is going to show you another key measurement. So when you are measuring from here, what this measurement is, I've done it quite a few times when I've been drawing these labyrinths. It's basically where you measure from the center to here and it's point eight of a centimeter so or eight millimeters i'm just going to mark it there and this is a very key point for drawing your labyrinth and you'll soon see why so when you first start with your pair of compasses you start off by pushing in a little bit here creating a good mark and then trying to match up as best as you can your compass with the outer point of your seed of life, leaf or petal. And then you try and draw a circle, which is your best effort at trying to match up that corner with roughly where the seed of life petal crosses the inner circle and then keeping it in the same place this is a bit more tricky for compasses doing teeny tiny semicircles you then try and match where that circle is again as best as you can as close as you can to this central point now don't worry if it's a teeny bit off it's, it's fine I think it's all too possible to get caught up in the nitty gritty of the accuracy. And if that's your thing, absolutely go for it. It's not my thing. It's more the, the process that I really love of creating the labyrinth and the finished product. So what I'm going to try and do here, is I'm going to try and meet the very middle here and draw another arc. And then I'm going to carry on this arc to make it a semicircle, and then what I'm going to do while I'm still in that same place, I'm going to try and meet this line here that was drawn, this little mini semicircle, and again I'm going to try and do another semicircle here to create another full line, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the bottom right corner and create a semicircle here. And we go all the way around to there. 
and then I'm going to try and as best as I can match where this line would cross. I don't know if you saw that on the camera, the where I've been pushing these places, it just sort of popped back. So this is why it's good to sort of refine with that little wheel at the top. So again, I'm going to try and create a semicircle here as well. And next, I'm going to go to the top left of my little seed of life. And create an arc. And then a semicircle here. And I can also try my best to get in the middle somewhere there to create another semicircle. Here I'm going to do my other arc with the bottom left. There you go. And then here I'm going to again match where I can. Can you see I'm just dotting there. There we go. Can you see there? I'm trying to cross through where the petal um, crosses a circle and then I'm just doing a semicircle here. Now can you see there's no other matching semicircle? That's because this is going to be the entrance to the labyrinth. So just to make that clear on the eye, I'm going to get rid of that extra bit of the cross in the center of the circle. So you can see this is the way you go in. And then I'm going to do some more circles from this lower point here. There we go. Now I'm going to sweep up here. I'm going to sweep up here. And again, it's just so lovely. I love the sound of the pencil on the paper. I like the sound of the compasses as well. I'm going to go here to the, the top right. And again, do these quarter circles now from these different points. These are different circuits of the labyrinth. This is a seven circuited labyrinth. And lots of people like this one the best. I think it's one of the most popular. You have more complex ones like the 11 circuited one in Chartres in France in the cathedral there. And yeah, people, people like the seven um, circuited labyrinth because it's, there are a lot of sevens in life. There are seven chakras, seven colors to the rainbow. And some people say, with a labyrinth, if there are seven circuits, it's a bit like, you know, what of your seven chakras do you want to create as your, um, your letting go or balancing? Now, can you see that's a bit off, off there? So I'm going to try and meet it a little bit there. I'm going to widen bit by bit. See, it, you know, people can be really amazing at getting this perfect, but I'm one of those people that do my utmost <laughs> to get it as good as it can be and not worry too much about the finer details. Because if I got stressed out, it wouldn't be fun. There we go, getting there. And can you see, you know, for those eagle-eyed people, this little part of the circle is a little bit mismatched in there too. But again, you can just very gently do your best by hand to match it up, create a nice line that you feel happy with. And I'm going to go, can you see how key this single point is? And again, if it doesn't match perfectly, it's fine it's not going to show through in the finished design. See, it's a fair bit off here, but again, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do my best to try and align it. I'm just 
twiddling it bit by bit that'll do because as you saw when I showed you earlier the dots on the the finished one is they're just they're just really pretty and that's what you look at you don't look at the pencil lines that were underneath because the dots largely cover that up here we go that's almost matching there you go and let's try this one here we've nearly finished drawing the labyrinth beautiful and next up is going to be how to use the paints and obviously watercolors are what's in use here but you can use some really nice alternatives I'll show you a few later so as you can see here's my lovely labyrinth ready to do my dots I'm just going to rub out some of the extra lines and again you don't have to <coughs> be perfect you can finish this off afterwards but as long as you can get a really sort of good idea of how the lines are meant to be if there's a slight divergence there here or there it doesn't matter um, and then next up we'll go to the the dotting which is this really lovely process after we fill in or draw in our design for the seed of life highlighting I like highlighting this in the labyrinth design just to show the framework behind it and how it started life so far in this video what we've done is we've drawn the little cross near the bottom of the the card we've drawn circles semicircles quarter circles we've done the circuits of the labyrinth and we're now ready to start decorating, to start using the design that works for us. So in this current labyrinth, I'm gonna use these two colors with the Vita colors from Sweden. And I'm going to use this pipette and then just drop a bit of water on here and gently mix in and leave it to settle for a moment or two and just start dabbing from the center outwards. I'm going to start doing that once I've used this gold uniball pen and the gold uniball pen I'm going to be drawing by hand the seed of life and then the square outline. I really like just highlighting this it feels right to me you may choose to rub it out it may not matter to you but I love the seed of life I love the flower of life so anything that shows that symbol for me is, is special and magical. So I'm going to be doing that next um, I'm going to show you another couple of examples of the variation that you can sort of play with to draw the lines so I show, showed you a finished example earlier but this is another variety that you can play with like coloring in the lines so I'm using these kinds of pens they're called pro markers and you have two ends a pointy end and a more brush type of end um, they are alcohol based it's by Windsor and Newton and you just gently color in how you like you can color in the whole amount if you want and you can use a pro marker blending brush here to sort of make it more watercolor effect um, the other thing you can do is you can play with just fully filling in the lines making them really strong so again I've used a sort of rich blue here for the the pro marker fill and I did a initial line as well with uh, just a normal felt tip pen this one is um, by Stabilo really nice colors and lines that you can make and I also used a metallic metallic marker by Letraset so this is where I just drew more of a a thick line around the initial line and you can see here with the uh, uniball I've drawn the seed of life and I've also just infilled the background with dots so I like dots I like stripes so I'm playing with those motifs at the moment so we're gonna go on to to now finishing and decorating the labyrinth it's just this really meditative process using the dots you can't rush anything it's like coloring in and those nice coloring books um, but it's completely your own so on, onwards and upwards so I've just used this pipette to drop a bit of water on to each of the paints I'm going to use the end of the embossing 
tool to start mixing in the water with the paint. You can see, if you go into the details, it just is swirling around a bit now and you just let it settle for a bit. Again, you do the same with the other one. So you don't want to overload it with water, just enough to mix it and dip it in. And then you can just keep topping it up bit by bit. So I'm just going to let that sit for a moment. And I'm going to also, um, I'm going to start drawing the seed of life with the gold pen. So here we go. I'm just doing this freehand, just carefully, as best as I can. And I, I quite like drawing freehand. It's quite a relaxing process. There's one. Here's the other. And the other thing I like to do is draw around the edges of this square. It creates a nice little frame for the seed of life. And I love it that just from this initial circle you can get all these petals and from the corners of the petal you can derive a beautiful square. The square is such a strong shape, quite masculine and the petals are rather feminine as flowers tend to be associated with the feminine. Symbols can be very powerful. Spirals can be powerful. Labyrinths can be powerful. All sorts of shapes. So here we go, final side to the square. And then we're going to start using the paints, creating some beautiful dots. So the very first dot I'm going to start with, I think I'll start with the blue. I love this, this color mix of the blue and the pink. They've both got this metallic sheen to them. So I'm going to start where am I going to start? I'll start here at one of the corners. I'm going to do, I usually just like to do four at a time. It just feels like the right amount that I can use with the same single dip into the paint. And now I'm going to do four pink, go back to the blue and so on. Sometimes if I do them a bit close together, they kind of meet and blend a little bit. I kind of like that. Like I've kind of hinted throughout this video, it's nice just to have everything perfectly imperfect. And just enjoy the process. It's the feeling that you put into the artwork that comes through this was being automatically printed, it would feel different to the person looking at it. But the quality of this ink is so beautiful. I know colours by Vita are very high quality handmade pigments. And a wonderful artist introduced me to them and the quality really stands out. The artist is Tamir Art. I'd recommend her work. Very talented. And 
And it's thanks to Tamea that I studied how to draw labyrinths with a lovely artist and a maths teacher called Clarissa Grandy. I'm very grateful to her and her lovely way of teaching and sharing knowledge. I'm able to turn my love of labyrinths into art form now. So in the blue paint, it's starting to go a bit more gloopy. So I'm going to put in a little bit more water and just a little bit at a time, mix it in so I have enough to keep going with. See, it's quite satisfying and relaxing.
when this has dried, which won't take too long, but you want to leave it long enough, it will have a really lovely tactile quality to these little dots. You will find that it's just gorgeous to run your fingers over the dots. Um, you may want to have a dot to show where the entrance is. I'm just going to finish this last curve. Sometimes that just feels nice to um, create something. So I'm just going to do a dot here. There you go. To show where you enter the labyrinth. There you go. So I hope you've enjoyed going through this designing, creating, painting a labyrinth with me. And if you've got any suggestions or any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.